everyone. Jensid Organist here, and welcome to another episode of Orgocraft. I hope you all are having a great day today. So behind me, I have made a little bit of a bulletin board. Um, I've had a lot of projects that I want to get working on, and I wanted to make sure I kept track of all of them. So I put this board over here, and let's just go through some of the things that I want to do in the, the next few episodes. Um, so the, the thing we're going to do first up in this one is we, we need to go to the nether. Um, a lot of these farms that I want to do, um, the, the pumpkin farm, the sugarcane farm, um, and the automatic wool farm, um, we need observers for those. And those are made with quartz and quartz can only be found in the nether. So that's what we need to do before we get to anything else. So... That's our, that's our first project for today. But my second one for today is actually going to be to work on a skeleton farm. As I've been out doing some resource gathering in the world, I finally found a skeleton spawner. And this is going to be a great source of um, bones for bone meal for crops and trees. And, um, and then also for arrows and bows that we need for various other things. So I want to I want to get that going today as well. And then depending on how much time those takes, I'm guessing we probably won't get to any more than those two today. Um, but I want to get a sugarcane farm going, a pumpkin farm, um, and as I said, the, the automatic wool farm. And then um, as far as uh, building stuff is concerned with with our village and getting that all finished up, I want to build a stables. Um, for the two horses that we have here, and I've actually found a couple more saddles, so maybe we could get a few more horses, um, and maybe some better pens for the animals as well. You know, I'm going to go ahead and change that. And so let's say stay, whoops, stables, animal pens. It's not nearly as easy to talk and type as I thought it would be, and we'll have to re-dye that sign because the black on the dark oak is very hard to read. Um, and then I want to de-orange the village trees. So I think we talked about this in the last episode. These acacia trees, they have the, the orange um, inside to them, but if we use those bark blocks, we can cover all of that. So I want to I want to just kind of keep working on that and getting that done. I want to finish up with the landscaping around the village. I'd like to add some additional houses, and I'd like to make a boat out in this little lake here um, to go along the docks that we have. Nothing, nothing extravagant, but just a little bit of a fishing boat to really to kind of complete this village. So those are, those are the tasks for the immediate future. I don't know what order we'll work on any of these, um, but this is, this is what I want to do to kind of finish um, this part of the world, and then we'll move on to working on some other projects. So let's get to making a nether portal. The, the trick with this is going to be figuring out where to put it. I don't like having my nether portals out in the open. Um, things can wander through them on both sides. Um, and so I, you know, and they make a lot of noise. So what I was actually kind of thinking was to come and go under here and and put it back here. And then we could actually make this into like a, a secret door um, that we can activate so that we can easily get in and out. But none of our villagers, no other mobs can get in or out. So let's clear a little bit of this area. And I'm going to need to move that torch. Let's push this back a few blocks. Let's see. Uh, let's go back one more. And there we go. Now, to make another portal, we need obsidian. And I'm also going to grab some of this cobblestone that we did because I only have just enough obsidian. And so to make a portal, it is, um, the, the entrance to it is, um, two wide and three high. Is, that's, that's the minimum size for a nether portal. You can go bigger than that, certainly. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and cap those corners off there. All right. And then we take a flint and steel and we activate it on there. And there is our nether portal. We are going now. We're about to enter one of the scariest places in the game. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to take my helmet back on. 
I'm gonna grab my shield up here, which I really could have used for the village raid a while back. Um, I'll talk more about that a little bit later. I had a problem with the footage. So that's why the bonus episode did not end up coming out. All right. Sword in hand, shield. Here we go. And we'll see what kind of terrain we generate when we get to the nether. This can be a little bit scary. If it loads. Okay. Well, it looks like we are in a fairly safe spot. That's good news. All right. <laughs> World's lagging just a little bit as everything loads in for the first time. So, welcome to hell. I said, oh, we came in a good place. We are on right the edge of a little bit of an island jutting out here over a very, very large lava lake. We do not want to fall down there. It looks like this is at least several blocks thick, so not too worried. Um, but I currently have an efficiency for pickaxe, and that will tear through. Uh, this red stuff that you're seeing is called nether rack. Um, and, yeah, with, with how my pickaxe is right now, I tear through it pretty fast. So it would be fairly easy to dig a hole down. So we don't want to do that um, and accidentally fall through into the lava. So let me see if I can get back up here. The good news is we don't seem to have too many monsters around bothering us. So the nether is home to zombie pigmen, um, ghasts, Wither Skeletons and Blazes. Now, Wither Skeletons and Blazes only spawn in another fortress, so we won't have to deal with those too much. Oh, they're also Magma Cubes. Those, that's, that's the other one that we have to deal with. Um, but there are certain resources that you can only get in the Nether. Quartz is one of them, and this is a Quartz Block. And I'm going to go ahead and get that. This is what we are actually here for, because um, that is what we need. Um, to be able to make some of our redstone components to make these farms. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extend the island around this nether portal just a little bit, just to make it a little bit safer. Let me fill that in. There we go. It's a little hard to do that with this shield, which I think I can go ahead and actually put out of my hand now. So we don't need the flint and steel anymore. That I am still going to shift so that I don't fall off the edge. All right, so that's got this island built up a little bit more. I can feel a little bit more safer about that. And you know what? I'm going to do one more thing just as a precaution, and I'm going to go ahead and cover the back of the portal so that we don't accidentally run out and run off a cliff. I don't think I'd actually do that, but yeah, we're we're not going to take any chances. All right, so. The other resource that we're going to get here, in addition to the nether quartz, there's actually several of them. Um, one of them is glowstone, and glowstone is used to make different lighting in the game. Um, oh wait, I talked before about how we don't have a lot of good lighting options. Um, glowstone, on its own, doesn't look particularly pretty, but you can make lamps out of it that look a lot better. So I'm going to grab a whole bunch of this quartz that's right here. This is a nice vein of this stuff. Whoa! Alrighty, that was almost a very quick end to this trip. <laughs> I am not a fan of this place. Alright, let's go ahead and fill this back in. Alright, grab that, and let's see. <laughs> Alright, shifting, and we're going to grab glowstone. <laughs> Alright. Oh, this place is so dangerous. I take it back. We did not land in a very good place. In fact, I think this is it? No, I guess, I guess it kind of wraps around over here. What 
you are hearing is a zombie pigman. I don't see any right here. But there's got to be one close. There he is. Now, the nicest thing about these mobs is left to their own devices, they won't attack you. However, hit one of them, and every single zombie pigment in the area will come after you. So we are going to be very careful not to hit them. All right, so... Basically, the biggest things I'm looking for are the quartz and the glowstone today. We are gonna, we will come back and explore this nether more in depth. So I'm going to gather some resources, and I will meet you back in the overworld. Welcome back to the overworld. Well, I have survived the first trip into the nether. I realized after I stopped filming that there are a couple more resources in there that we need. They're no longer exclusive to the nether. Um, they are soul sand and magma blocks, and they allow us to make water elevators, which was a new feature added in the previous um, update of Minecraft 1.13. Um, they changed a lot of the water mechanics and how all of that stuff works, and you can now um, basically make elevators out of water columns. Hello, skeleton. I'm trying to talk to my friends here, and I don't think I'm going to beat you with a potato. There we go. Anyway... After that rude interruption. Uh, yes, so those are a couple of things I wanted to get just to make getting into our skeleton farm a little bit easier, but there I had no easy access to them, so I left those off. So we can take one of these projects off the list. All right. Hey, hey, making progress. I love making to-do lists and then uh, checking them off. I've been sticking spare signs back here so that if we add any other projects, we can do that. So let us head out to the place where I don't need those. Don't need those. We got a chicken. All right. Uh, I'm gonna keep picking up eggs. I which horse is fast? Are you the faster horse? No, you're not very fast. Are you the faster horse? Yes, you're the fast horse who can't jump. That's right. Which means I probably can't get out of here. Haha! <laughs> I made it. All right, I think that I have everything in my that I need in my inventory. Yep, we should be good to go. Now if I can just remember how to get there. We go this way. So, yes, so um, the reason I'm working on the skeleton farm first is that um, to really be able to make some good progression, I need to be able to do a lot more enchanting, um, both for armor and for our tools and weapons. And in order to get the best enchantments, you need to be able to have um, at least 30 levels. Did I lose my trail? Where did my torches go? Torch there. Where's the... Oh, it's right here. <laughs> I'm closer than I thought I was. Yes, so in order to do that, we need some kind of farm where we can gain XP, and a skeleton farm is a really good way to do that. Um, so that's why I want to get that going first, so that we have a way to gain XP, and... Um, yeah, um, and then also bone meal. Bones are a, a really useful resource to have. So... Our dungeon is down here, and did I did I just dig? Yeah, I think I just I think I just came straight out. So we're gonna go ahead down here. Never dig straight down in Minecraft, except that I know where I'm going, and I know that there's no lava, and I'm safe doing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And this is why we need a bubble elevator, because it is a wait. The cobblestone stopped. I'm confused. <laughs> Time to go back up. Wait. Okay, there's cobblestone there. Is it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't go straight up from the um, from the spawner itself. So yes, yeah, so here it is. We've got it all lit up so that no skeletons are actually spawning. I actually found this off of an abandoned mine shaft over here, um, which I didn't actually 
finished gathering all the resources from, mostly because my inventory was full. I'm gonna grab this stuff real quick. And I know I made torches, there they are. All right, let's go ahead and torch this place up. Because the last thing we need is anything coming after us while we're working on this project. I'm actually gonna block it off so that that doesn't happen. All right, that should be good to go. Of course, I'm gonna fall in this hole, knowing me. You saw how many times I almost fell into a hole in the nether, so. All right, so what we need to do before we can make anything out of this is we need to clear a nine by nine room, um, and then we need to create a little bit of an area underneath um, this. I think this is called a dungeon. I think that's, I think they call these rooms where the spawners are, are dungeons. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this room cleared out, and then we'll start working on um, the the, um, uh, the the system to get the, spi the, the spiders, the skeletons, to a place where we can finish them off. All right, welcome back. I have gone ahead and gotten this room all cleared out. You'll notice that this wall is all cobblestone, and this wall is all cobblestone. I actually made the room too big, because um, apparently I can't count. So we need to make a system now to deliver the skeletons um, to a uh, to to one point where we can easily kill them off. We also kind of want to soften them up when they get there. So what we need to do is we need to basically make a hole in the middle of this and then create another room below here to. Um, to, to deliver them to. It also then gets them out of range of the spawner so that the spawner will keep generating new skeletons so that we basically have an unlimited supply of them. So one of the first things we need to do is make a piston. And I don't know the recipe. There it is. All right, we're going to just use that. And then we need to actually make it a sticky piston. There we go. Um, the sticky piston will allow us to... I don't know why I needed to have that as a half slab. Oh, well, I'm going to need half slabs later, so that's fine. All right, so let's go to the center, which is right here. And we're going to go down one, two... Let's go down one more. Is this what I want? One more. All right, and then what we're going to do is we are going to go there... And then we're going to stick our sticky piston back there. And then we're going to go ahead and put a slab on it right there. And this will allow us to essentially turn the farm on and off. Now, I think I need to drop eight blocks. So we've already gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, that should be far enough, and that should be a drop that hopefully will get them to a point where it only takes one or two hits to kill them. So let's go ahead now and dig out this way. Let's put a torch down. Um, all right, so they're going to come in here, and then let's go ahead and make a little bit of a room out this way. It doesn't need to be anything huge right now. We just need a workable space. So let me go ahead and clear a little bit of this out. too high is really not a wide, big enough ceiling. So while I'm clearing this out, actually, okay, it's clear, never mind. Uh, it was going to be story time, but that went faster than I thought it was going to be, and let's go ahead and bring this floor down so that we can stand below them. And, oh, now it got dark. All right, we'll put that there. We'll put a couple extra because I'm about this. All right, so we need a way to be able to um, extend that sticky piston, which is out the back there, which now that I think about it was probably not the best place to put it, but that's fine. We can work with it. So we need to go, let's go here, and then that's where our slab should be, that's where our piston should be, and then we need to go one more behind that. Let's go ahead and dig up here. I'll take that iron. I'll take all that iron. Thank you. We'll fill this back in. We'll see if we torch here so that we can see what we're working with. All right. 
I left my crafting table up there, didn't I? Yes, yes, I did. Um... Filled with indecision. Yeah, hang on. Sorry about that. So I got down here and I realized that I had no way to get out without filling in the hole that I had already done, and I realized this was going to be a continuing problem of needing to get in and out of this room. So I made a very, very crude stairway out of here. Um, but yeah, that just completely threw me off when I got stuck in here, and I was like, what, what am I supposed to do now? All right, so we need some redstone torches here. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. And yep, we're gonna need the redstone dust. And then we also need a way to. Uh, is that how you make a lever? That's how you make a lever. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this. Let's see here. Um. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this here. How do I do? Um, I am not an expert when it comes to redstone, as you're about to find out. We're going to do that. And I got to be able to get around here. And then we're going to put that there. And then we're going to put a redstone torch there. And then... Let's see. I don't know if... There. Uh, what did I do? Oh. Okay, hang on a second. If I put a lever there, and I turn that on, it should turn that off. But if I put a block on top, I should not be able to put a block on top of this, right? Okay, and then if I put a torch there, it should be on. If I flip this lever, it should... Nope, it makes that burn out. Um... I bet I need some... Actually, I might be able... I think what I need is a... called a repeater. And I need stone. Okay. And... Alright, I go make stone. Okay, I have gotten my stone. I have made my redstone repeater. Um, what this will do is it'll allow me to power this block. So it'll send power from here into this block, which will turn off the torch that is under here, which is currently on. If I hop around here, we can see if I go all the way down here, that torch is on. And this torch is off, so one will power the other, which will basically form a chain that goes up. So as you can see, when I flip the lever, now this one is on. So what we need to do is we need to take this all the way up to where our piston is. So I'm going to jump over here because I'm going to need room to do all of this. Um, hopefully I'm in the right place. All right. Well, we'll figure this out as we go. That torch. Uh, let me fill this in. And then I think, let's see if I, nope, I can't break that with a bow. Right, so that is that. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I don't think I'm high enough. I think I'm one too low. So, we need that. And I'm out of redstone torches, which okay is okay because I can make one here. There we go. And... Alright. Oh! Well, that's why it's not working. <laughs> Aha! That's why. Okay, so then if I take this redstone dust and put it there, it's not powered. And if I put this here, it's powered. That's what we're going for. I should be able to cover that up. 
and then come the rest of the way up here. So there we go. We got that out there, closing it off so no more mobs can fall through. And then if we come back down here and click this lever, it will open up. So there it is, open, and we can see everything. Closed, and this lab comes out. Perfect, all right. And then we will just break this. And you know what? I'm gonna throw a torch back here just to be on the safe side so no mobs spawn in there. And then we will seal that off and put our lever right there. There we go. Okay, so there's that part done. The next, so let's see. So then we need to make sure that the mobs are not going to be able to see us when they fall down. That should work. This is the ugliest um, skeleton spotter ever, but that's okay. We will, we'll, we'll make it pretty once we get it functional. So the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we can deliver the mobs down to that lower level. So in order to do that, we need to basically flood this room. And I'm going to need a water source because I'm going to need four... I'm going to need four buckets of water. So what we can do is we can one there, one there, and then we can draw out the corner. All right, and if I did this correctly, I should be able to put this in all four corners, and it should end up right at the hole we made and not go beyond it. And it looks like we are good to go with that. And now I'm stuck. Okay, there we go. So then anything that we throw in there will just ride the water down, and we'll end up below. So this applies to mobs as well. Okay. And apparently even with all the torches on there, we are still getting skeletons, but he should know because he knows that I'm here. So he wants to, he's gonna fight me. Uh, okay. Oh, did he fall? He fell, yay. All right. So basically that's all we need to do. This is a very, fairly simple design. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to break all the torches off of here and it's about to get very dark in this room skeletons are going to start spawning all right i don't know yep they will see there's that so i just need to yeah yeah i'm gonna go ahead and seal this room off which will make it completely dark and then if we go down to the bottom we will find skeletons waiting for us or skeleton all right and we'll hit them like that I don't think they had to fall quite far enough. Oh, apparently they can hit me. Well, that's how we do that. And then basically I'm just going to sit here and let them fall into this hole and then kill a bunch of them. We might need to do something to soften them up because, yeah, they're definitely taking three, three hits to kill. I don't have the strongest sword, um, so that might be part of it. But so this is how we're going to get XP. This is how we're going to get a ton of bones and a ton of arrows. Um, and that's going to be helpful going forward. So we definitely need to clean this room up um, a lot because this is pretty ugly and we need to make a better way to get in here. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about that today. Um, there's one more thing that I'd like to, that I'd like to try to get set up. Um, before we end this episode, because it's it's that automatic wool farm, which would be useful to just be able to have running in the background. So I'm gonna head back over um, to our little home base, and we will get to work on that. I'll see you in a minute. All right, we have made it back home safe and sound. So let's go ahead and take another project off of our board. We'll go ahead and stick that sign in the back. It's no longer symmetrical. It's no longer symmetrical, but that's okay. Um, I could have put that at the bottom, and then we could have had a face. Wait, I'm making a face. There we go. Now we have a face. All right. Anyway, so we need to make a couple of things before we can do this next little project. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make this too fancy, but we need um, we need an observer. Which, what did I not grab? Oh, I didn't grab the coal right there. That's all right. I've got that right in there. All right, now we can make that. 
So there's our observer. An observer will detect changes to um, blocks, or you can put like a string in front of it, and when something walks through that, it'll detect it. Um, but basically, what happens is, you know, when when it detects certain inputs, it'll it'll output a a redstone signal. So then the other thing that we need is a dispenser. And a dispenser, let's see if I can remember this. I've already made several of them, but I believe that if we do that, so that will make a dropper and that just um, puts something out. But we actually need a dispenser, which is done with a bow and we'll do that. And that's what we will use to make a dispenser. And I actually have the stuff to make one more of those. So I don't, what am I missing? Oh, I think it's not registering the the bow because it's not a it's not it's not an unused bow. The nice thing about uh, the dispensers is the bows can be in any condition and it'll be just fine. And it does oh, she's hi no you, out 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 yes you can go in. Your llamas are staying out <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That scared me. I thought that was a zombie coming in to get me. So, let's see. Now, my concern in putting this down is that all of the sheep are going to try to get out as soon as I do this. So, actually, I'm going to do this from the inside because i got to make sure the dispenser is placed correctly. And that they can be a little tricky to place sometimes. We're going to go ahead and put... We'll go ahead and put it there. And then I'm going to go into the pen... No, 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 no! Ah! Alright. That sheep may become dinner. Nah, that's okay. I can get him back. Alright. Guys, you seriously need to get out of the way here. I don't know. I don't know if I can do this with all these sheep in here. Alright, we're gonna take that out, and then I want to put the. Yeah, you know what? Just go. Okay. The dispenser's now in, and I gotta put something on top of this, or they're all gonna escape! No, 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 no! Okay, that should keep them in. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I knew that was going to be a problem. We'll get these sheep back, don't worry. All right, so I'm going to make a button here to put on that so that we can temporarily power it. And then I need to go in here, and I'm going to put the shears in here. And the way this works now, and this is, this is a new update, is when a sheep is in front of the dispenser, and we have the shears, I have to push that, it will automatically shear the sheep for us. So anytime they walk past and this goes off, it'll shear the sheep. So what we need to do is we need to put the observer in there. Honestly, I'm half tempted to just open the gate and let these all run out so that we can actually get at this. So what we're going to do, maybe, why are you all over here? If I were to hit one of them, they'd all go running, but I really don't want to do that. Okay, so, we want to do that, and... Sheep! Oh my goodness. Hang on. Okay, I have cordoned off part of this pen so that the sheep cannot get in here. <laughs> in retrospect, I probably should have built this somewhere else. Okay, now, we need to know which way the observer is going to face. So, that is what will output the signal. So... We're going to want to put this that way, and that will be our output. So then what we need to do, I'm just going to take all of this down for right now. Yeah, I didn't think this through. This is probably going to need to be uh, cleaned up. Are you kidding me? Okay. <sighs> All right, so then what we can do is we can take redstone dust and... Actually, I'm going to need to take that out. I'm... I'm going to need to finish this. And let's see, I'll need to take the button off of there, but this isn't going to go. That's no. Nope. 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 Okay, that should work. So when... Whenever something happens to this block, if grass grows or um, if grass gets eaten, it should trigger a redstone signal that will then come out and then we'll get the sheep sheared. So, 
going to go ahead and take this down. I need to put my fence posts back in place. Of course, I don't have enough. I'm just going to pretend they can't get through there. Right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what we're going to go with. They, they're not going to be able to... I left the pen open. And now they fall. Escaped. You know what? Sometimes you need to know to quit when you're ahead. And when we finished the skeleton spawner, we were ahead. We are no longer ahead. So, with the sun setting... And having already sunk below the tree farm, and my sheep running amok throughout the village. I think I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends, and leave me a comment as well. It definitely helps out the channel when you do that. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to subscribe, and make sure you click that little notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all of my latest posts. Be sure to follow me on social media, and if you'd like to help support the channel, I would encourage you to consider becoming one of my Patreons. You can find links to all of these sites down in the description. Thanks for watching. See you real soon.